situated in between, you know, the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean, it is indeed a special place. They're putting a lot of effort into transforming ideas into something useful for society and focusing now on climate change study and specifically putting funding to, to improve that aspect, which, which is key, you know, for the future. Dr. Sarah Andriotti is a marine biologist who's working on saving sharks in South Africa. I believe we should take a very good care of the three quarter of our planet. The oceans are taking care of our oxygen level on the planet and we kind of need oxygen to breathe. So I believe that understanding how interlinked humans are with the ocean will be the first step to push towards sustainable utilization of our ocean resources and protection of the great animals that keeps the ocean balanced. Sharks are a really important component of our ocean ecosystem. If you have too many grazers, then you will have less seaweeds. And with less seaweeds, you have less oxygen production. So that is one aspect uh, that impacts the ocean if you get the top predators out of it. But also with climate change, what you have is an increase in water temperature, and they call it acidification of our water. And with acidification, then that breaks down the CO2. That's how you get too much carbon released in the planet. Sharks are facing many threats, and climate change is one of them. The change in water temperature is affecting the distance they can swim and their ability to hunt. I think shark net is the one threat that we can get rid of as soon as we decide to stop using them. So shark safe is basically the fastest way to get rid of these nets into museum to show what horrible thing we used to do to solve the shark-human conflict. In order to save our ocean, we need to save our sharks. The Shark Safe Barrier Project is a world first because it is indeed the first nature-inspired, uh, eco-friendly barrier that is shark specific. It took about six years to get the right material and the right robustness without making it too expensive as well. Not far away from the coast, Jason Samuels is working on cutting back on the energy used by schools in South Africa. I'm finishing off my studies that was research into how schools use electricity. And we had a focus on behavioral interventions and efficiency interventions. It's really nice to come back to school to be able to do research that changes how they manage their water, their electricity, and that creates savings for them. So specifically, it's um, the Internet of Things with regards to how water is managed and how energy is managed. So how that played out was that there was a smart water meter created and a smart energy meter created. And I mean, that's where it all started. So if you can measure it, then you can, you can manage it and you can be aware of it. The idea is called the Dropula Project. It's the smart water meter challenge where schools would then compete against each other to see how much water they can save. They used the Count Dropula 
That was the name for the, the smart water meter to then log what they would use um, and then compete against each other and then they would get a prize. So instead of uh, sucking blood, it just uh, yeah, sucks away the, the water wastage, which is quite interesting. <laughs> Going from academics into people's actual lives, that doesn't always happen. But with these projects, it's, it actually happened, which was amazing. So yeah, I really, really like to do this research where it translates well into the real world. We gave schools their data back. We just visualized it in a nice, understandable way. And we also educated them on how the tariffs work. So they knew when they used what, and also how much they paid. It went from five schools, and just from a professor um, wanting to help out one school that his daughter was at, um, to 350 schools across the province of the Western Cape, and um, them saving 500 million litres of water across the project, which is, which is just insane. Millions of litres of water were saved, and millions of, of rands were saved for schools, and particularly poor schools. Back on the coast, Dr. Andriani is testing the shark barrier. What makes shark safe barrier unique is it keeps only sharks out of the area while other animals can swim through. That way the impact of the local ecosystem is reduced. Sharks have a very unique sense that allows them to deter very minute electric and magnetic field in the water. And when put in contact with a very strong magnet underwater, the magnet overpowers this sense that the shark have and act as a deterrent. And for the first time we have something that is copying how nature does that already, which is a thick forest of kelp combined with this clever idea of using magnetism to deter sharks specifically. We tested the Shark Safe Barrier in Kansby, which is well known to be one of the roughest places around our coast. Kansby can have waves that are up to nine meters. So we did test it in one of the roughest places we could find. And the idea for us was to build something that once it's deployed, is gonna stay there. Of course, the ocean have a way to break things. So we had to go through six years of trial and error to get the right combination of component and uh, welding and floatability and attachment to the seafloor that will make it robust and will make it effective to deploy and retrieve if needed. The Shark Safe Barrier is the first eco-friendly and shark-specific technology that will allow to keep sharks separated from humans in the area where humans want to go and swim and surf. So my hope is that the barrier will become a tool to protect people when needed, but ultimately a tool to get people to understand shark better and not be so afraid of them and the vision will be to have shark safe all over the world where it is needed and have local team to take care of it and use that as an excuse to spark conservation effort and study on the artificial reef and shark awareness campaign because, because these animals really need an active effort to make them survive and to get them to survive and be here for the next generation. Currently, coal is by far the major energy source for South Africa. About 80% of the country's energy comes from coal. Scientists believe that that contributes to the high volume of CO2 emissions that goes into the air and increases global temperatures. That's how schools can play a role with regards to South Africa contributing to the reduction of the impact of climate change. 
So now we got the opportunity to actually take the usage of the schools in South Africa and we could compare it to the usage of schools across the world, which was quite fantastic to see. We still actually use not a lot of, of electricity, which is, which is interesting. So you, then you can ask a few questions of what, why is that? And we also saw a disparity between um, the richer schools and the poorer schools. The poorer schools would use almost um, like half the energy usage of richer schools. So our conclusion was that there needs to be more infrastructure investment in poorer schools. They still had old light bulbs that were just drawing too much energy for the technology that we currently have. At that point, we just said, okay, let's replace these lights and see what we can do. I know it sounds very simple, but we then replaced those old fluorescent lights with the best LED light. And when you do that, you get lots of savings, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so you don't only get the monetary savings, but you also get um, the actual light quality improvement for the learners, which I think is a win-win. The technology being used here is the LED, LED technology. Um, this light normally draws about 20 watts, which is a really some huge reduction from the previous fluorescent. So how that relates to climate change is that you have less energy drawn out from these lights and schools have hundreds and hundreds of these lights. And that's a way how South Africa, through schools, are contributing to the climate change goals. Every effort counts in helping to reduce energy use. If you have human-made climate change in combination with an unbalanced ocean, then the effect on the planet is going to be a lot worse than just climate change. 